Hi, my name is Elizabeth Henderson, and last semester I did my honors contract on the Book of Kells with Allison Smith in Art History from Ancient to Renaissance. And the Book of Kells is Ireland's national treasure. Um, it is from the 8th century, and it has been known as the chief relic as the, of the Western world. And the reason for that being is because this book actually helped change a lot of Western history as for language and the dominant religion of Christianity. The reason why I particularly was interested in it is because of a movie that I saw in middle school called Secret of Kells, which is about a little boy and a fairy girl that help find a book and create a book <laughs> that changes darkness into light. And I remember seeing this movie and thinking, what is this? What is the significance? And I looked it up and actually found out that the Book of Kells is a, um, a book containing the four Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John of the first, um, the New Testament. And the reason why it was created for the simple reason is to Christianize the pagan Celts of the old world. So you can probably think of um, St. Patrick. He's pretty well known as being one of these missionaries that went over to Ireland to Christianize the Celtic peoples. And um, at the time, they, Ireland was actually one of these outer islands in Europe that was considered the edge of the world. So people thought that when they were Christianizing the Celtics of the Ireland and Scotland, that they were literally reaching Jesus' last commission to go to the edge of the earth to preach the gospel to people. And St. Patrick is the most famous for this, of course. He's, we know him as the one that drove out the snakes of Ireland. Um, but he, along with many other people, many other missionaries, went over to Ireland to complete this process. So before Christianity, um, there was a completely drastically different culture of Celtic paganism. So um, a lot of this had to do with other pa pagan religions, like, you know, with sacrifice um, of, I mean, other not exactly human sacrifice, but animal sacrifice to deities, um, many gods, polytheism. It was very drastically different. Um, yeah, okay. Yeah. But when it came to the Book of Kells, this first book that was introduced to it, it was a kind of fusion of Celtic mythology, Celtic styles, and Christian styles. We can see this as a visual representation in the book. Um, it also helped with language. And as you can see from this kind of, it looks like a heat chart of Celtic migration. It started out in the middle of European mainland and then spread out to the very edges. And those darker areas on the side are where Gaelic and Celtic languages are still spoken. But um, a lot of these areas, these tribes, the Celtic tribes and barbaric tribes did not have any language if they were not a part of the Roman Empire, which was going on at the same time of the pre-8th century, pre-Book um, of Kells time. So what basically this is, manuscript illumination, which is what the Book of Kells is an example of, is deeply decorated and detailed work that combines language with art. And these illustrations kind of demonstrate the stories of the Bible. If they weren't necessary, necessarily um, religious text, then they could have been other stories, but it just, as you can see, there's all these different styles. These are all from different centuries. The Book of Duro, um, the, French, the French examples and Turkish examples of the same kind of manuscript illumination, all different centuries. Um, the Book of Duro is the most closely related to the Book of Kells. It was actually 200 years before when the Book of Dura was created. These other ones are post examples. Um, okay, and kind of what it's featuring and these artistic styles of manuscript illumination is a combination 
of paganistic or Celtic styles, which are very swirly, very full of animals, symbols, and medieval Christian styles that was going on at the same time. So very realistic portraiture to combine to insular art, which features kind of cartoon-like and bright, vivid explanations of these biblical stories. And not all insular styles are alike. So in the Book of Kells, for example, there are three artists as identified by several different scholars. The first one being the illustrator, which is known for painting the virgin and child scene in the Book of Kells, and the um, temptation scene, as well as other um, very colorful, bright portraits of people. But the one known as the portrait artist specifically is known as having the style that created borders, such as this one on the right here, and then the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, created as different animal symbols, as many scholars have, and um, biblical interpretations have combined interpretations of the Gospels as representing animal deities, not deities, but animalistic features. Um, oh yeah, the most famous one, most famous artist of the Book of Kells is known as the Goldsmith. We don't know any of their names, of course, but he's called the Goldsmith because of his wide use of the gold inks and swirls that he would use. He was the most talented artist. He created this page, which is the Cairo page, the most famous and iconic book um, page of the Book of Kells. And as you can see, um, it is very detailed, full of symbols of all kinds. We have human heads, um, swirls, trinity marks, and you can see from this very close-up detail that has been magnified, even if you were to zoom in as far as you could, you wouldn't be able to see all of the details of the swirls that continuously move. It's like a, like a spiral that goes inward. It's, it's incredibly detailed, and some scholars have even said that the artists and the illustrators for the Book of Kells had to use magnifying glasses or glass shards to paint these details. Um, and these symbols, the meaning for them, the triskels, the crosses, the faces, they worked as ways of transferring the pagan cultures to Christian cultures. They'd use these same symbols of animal faces, animal animal um, icons, um, Celtic knots especially, and transfer the meaning of those. So, yeah, for those illiterate, many of the people, like I said, are illiterate because they don't have Latin languages or Roman languages. Um, they use these visual symbols to, so that the pagan people, previously pagan people, would recognize them um, and have a more easier transition. For example, the triskel. Here's another detail of the Cairo page. Um, the triskel are these three swirling marks that come out. It's kind of like a, like a trinity, which now everyone knows as the trinity mark, the, the um, three points that the um, monks would transfer the meaning to as the, um, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. They used to mean other combinations of three elements. Um, animal motifs was another example. They, all of these are details of the Cairo page from before. So it would have cats and mice playing together, snakes, dragons, dogs, all kinds of different things that the Celtic people were used to seeing in their artwork. Um, and the most important thing, like I said, the Cairo page, the reason why it's called that is because this P-looking thing, it's making an X and an R. It's kind of making the old, the R kind of looked like a P for the Greek alphabet, um, which means it's the first two letters of Christ, Chi, Rho. So Christus, or Christos, and um, that the reason why that symbol has so much significance is because um, Constantine, first created it, um, if, to explain who Constantine was, he was a Roman emperor that used the Cairo symbol while he was in like the fifth century to reconquer the rest of the Roman Empire, and he would use his symbol Cairo 
um, kind of showing that the Celtic people had some inner trade with um, Mediterranean areas. And to kind of finish up, I'm going to talk about the materials that it was used, which are even in itself very complex, very hard to maintain. Vellum, for example, is made out of the skins of cows. Um, and now it's illegal to print anything on vellum, of course, but over 185 cows were used to make this book. And what they would do is skin the cow, use the knife back and forth, dip it in lemon to get the fur off of it, and use the rest of the skin to print things on. Um, kind of gross. For the rest of the inks that were used, all kinds of different things that were native to the land or um, traded with to create these different kinds of inks. And yellow, actually, yellow and green were both very um, acidic and poisonous to use, so they had to be very careful when using this, showing how talented the goldsmith artist was when he was using yellow extensively because he had to really carefully put that ink in. Um, other than that, it would have had this golden cover on it, but it's missing probably because 200 years after the book was started, um, where it was being held um, in Iona, uh, there was a Viking raid that kind of tore the book apart. And the Vikings, you know, they were only interested in the gold pieces of it, which were probably would have been covered in pearls, jewels, things like that. They stole that, leaving the book behind. We don't know where the cover is now. But this is another cover from a different book. This one, I think, is from the Book of Duro, if I remember correctly. Um, its current location for the Book of Kells is at Trinity College, if you're interested in seeing it. It's, they turn a new page every day so that there's at least some of the art visible and some of the writing. Of course, it's all Latin, so it's a little hard to read unless you have that memorized. But for a closer example, this is an illum illuminated manuscript at the Nelson Art Museum, and it is very beautiful. It's from the 16th, well, the 15th century, and it's also very, it's very different from the Book of Kells, but also extremely detailed and very beautiful. And honestly, because of the Book of Kells and because of books like these, that's why the whole Western world has Catholic and Protestant Christianity as their main religion, as their main culture, cultural background. So, other than that, that is all I have. So, yeah, I would suggest looking at the book. <laughs>